The company overcame design challenges with astonishing speed, but there's another achievement that's rarely talked about. After Starship's first integrated test flight, many questioned the reliability of the structure after witnessing its vulnerability to the superthrust of the 33 Raptor engines. However, by far, OLM has gone through several upgrades and tests and now are fully operational. And following this, we can see three big changes to the Starship HLS design. It's a good signal showing that it can totally win against the double thrust of SLS in the upcoming test. In this video, we will delve into the unique structure of the OLM as well as the update SpaceX made on it. We'll also explore what makes the SpaceX OLM different from NASA's design. SpaceX's insane new launch mount is unlike any other. Let's discuss everything about this in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. First of all, let's find out about the structure of OLM. In space flights, the launch pad is used to support the vertical rocket before launching, so a mandatory standard is that its design must be very sturdy to be able to withstand. Rockets weighing many tons. For a normal rocket, this is not easy, but for SpaceX's Starship, this is even more difficult. As you know, the Starship rocket is the largest vehicle in the world with a mass of up to 5,000 tons and a height of 120 meters. From that, we can imagine how big it is. So to withstand this super heavy object, SpaceX's OLM was built specially. OLM has a height of 25 meters, 82 feet in total and consists of three main components. Six columns, six short pillars, and one orbital launch table. The hexagonal symmetry all the way down to the support's foundation piles shows that SpaceX's Starship launcher design can withstand the minimum required for a sturdy launcher. The launch table is the most notable component. By the naked eye, we can see that it has a diameter much larger than the 9 meters super heavy and has a height of about 5 meters. It has 20 separate hold down clamps that attach to the bottom of the booster for static fires and launches from the orbital mount. These clamps will be made of stainless steel and be designed to be very flexible and activated by a remote control system. It will help to fix the super heavy booster when it is placed on the launch mount. At the same time, it is also very flexible while unfolding during the Starship launch. To fuel the booster before liftoff, the launch table needs a quick disconnect mount, which is on the top of the table and will disconnect from the booster around T0. The QD will help provide the booster with methane, liquid oxygen, and helium, as well as supply external power prior to launch. There are six columns to support the launch table, each 14 meters, 46 feet high and about 2.5 meters, 8 feet in diameter, and filled with concrete. The massive connecting plates are held in position by anchor rods cast in concrete and welded to the columns. Six shorter pillars have been installed on the original six steel pipes. It is approximately 5 meters in length, 16.4 feet, with a diameter of 2.4 meters, 7.9 feet, and is welded to the connecting plates. Thanks to such an extremely sturdy design, SpaceX's launch mount was able to survive in the Starship's first test. At that time, only the foundation layer below was damaged, so later SpaceX's team focused on implementing several reinforcement measures. In the underground structure, we can see the combination of reinforcement and network of steel bars tightly connected to the foundation. This reinforcement provides structural integrity, ensuring that the launch mount can withstand the tremendous forces unleashed during rocket liftoff. One more interesting tidbit, SpaceX continues to use Frond DAG concrete for reinforcing some areas in the launch site that had been used under the launch mount before Starships. First Test In that test, it could not withstand the vehicle's super-powerful thrust, causing a fatal hole in the OLM, but we cannot blame it for the damage in there. To be honest, although it is high-quality specialized concrete for the launch site, it would be better to use it on surfaces that are not directly exposed to the Raptor's propulsion. The SpaceX team was probably not aware of this, so they still conducted the Starship test instead of waiting for the readiness of the water deluge system. Therefore, after April 20th, installing a water deluge system for OLM is a priority. This new system uses water to absorb energy from the rocket as it lifts off, with most of the water expected to be vaporized by the heat of the rocket engines. It is composed of a very thick perforated steel plate that sits directly underneath the rocket that CEO Elon Musk calls a mega steel pancake as well as manifolds and pipes connecting to the water tanks in the tank farm. 
This operation resembles the way you use a shower head, but in the upside-down direction. At that point, the water jets will be sprayed from the bottom to the top and then shot outward at a 45-degree angle. When the steel plate is placed under the rocket, water will be sprayed from the bottom to the top, then encountered directly with the exhaust gas from a group of Raptor engines on the top and vaporized quickly after that. At the same time, the water's pressure in the center by then will reach the peak, and in principle, the flow of water will move from high to low pressure. It means that the water flow during its powerful movement will even pull the heat and force to the outside. In this way, both the exhaust gas and the force of the Raptor will not have the chance to touch the steel plate as well as the foundation layer. The difficulty here is to ensure that the water injection pressure is higher than the exhaust pressure of the Raptor engines. To pump water into the launch mount from the storage tanks, 26 pipes as well as 3 manifolds were installed. The manifold systems facilitate the control distribution of water throughout the launch mount. With 26 pipes feeding into steel plates positioned beneath the launch mount, these manifolds orchestrate the intricate choreography of water pressure, a crucial element in the flange deflector's ability to protect the launch mount. Referring to the system's effectiveness through the previous tests, embracing full pressure test, booster static fire, and full stack vehicle test, we can see clearly that everything went smoothly. The amount of water used for each test ranges from 350,000 to 450,000 gallons, which is similar to the capacity of the system in NASA's launch pad 39B. Those are solid proofs of how simple and effective SpaceX's system design is. If you still doubt about this, let's make a comparison with NASA's system. In Launch Complex 39, the water deluge acts like the fireman with a hose to spray water from top to bottom. In this situation, the system plays a role in extinguishing fires and reducing sound waves emitted from rocket engines. NASA engineers are not afraid of damage to the launch mount because there is a fire trench underneath. Thus, you can see how complicated NASA's launch mount is, given that it consumes a huge land area to hold a flame trench in the hardware of the sound suppression system. Based on water Of course, it is just an unexpected aftermath because NASA initially had just wanted to build a flame trench but after that they were aware of the necessity of the water deluge system. SpaceX, with the advantage of its successor, draws lessons from NASA to be able to eliminate unnecessary parts on the launch mount, helping to save land area, time, effort, and money. So although rocket science deals with some of the most complex engineering formulas, it is really interesting to find some problems that can be solved with very simple solutions. And Starship's upcoming most wanted launch test will give the OLM one more chance to showcase itself. Next up, as NASA worries about the progress of the Starship HLS variant, SpaceX seems to be creating its new Starship human landing system configuration to show a much more refined design that could show where the company is heading. Well, it's a very cool rendering, different from the variant that we're all used to seeing. This interesting piece of news was first leaked by David Willis on X.com. Although their authenticity is not 100% confirmed yet, he has stressed that these renders aren't the work of a random YouTuber or 3D artist. They are official images that were part of the ongoing development process. Following this, we can see three big changes to the Starship HLS design. First off, the solar panels are now being deployed from bays at the top of the rocket. While in flight, they can fan out similar to how most spacecraft do solar panels. Once landed on the moon, the panels lower to be flush with the side of the lander. The inclusion of these massive solar panels make perfect sense given the substantial power requirements for a lunar mission. To sustain life support systems, charge devices, and operate machinery during the journey to the moon, you need a substantial power source. This Starship's sleek design philosophy aligns with Elon Musk's mantra. The best part is no part. The solar panels don't rely on complex hinges, reducing the risk of failure. Instead, they appear to extend and fold down from the ship's structure, optimizing efficiency. The second noticeable change is to the landing legs. They are much smaller and look fixed in place. The original design showed larger, possibly retractable landing legs. This new design could mean less weight than having the legs needing to retract into the body. Finally, if these renders are real, it shows that SpaceX has repositioned the thrusters to be in several pods around the lander. These landing thrusters are higher up to reduce the amount of disturbance they will cause on the lunar surface. The last thing you need when you're landing is large rocks flying all around you. 
Notably, this rendering appears incomplete, with the elevator hatch and airlock seemingly floating without visible attachments to the ship. And while we aren't sure if these are real, renders from SpaceX, they are of the same style and quality. The render of the Starship HLS landed on the lunar surface even has the same ground features and background as the original. There's a good chance these renders could have been used for some sort of internal briefing with stakeholders like NASA but never released to the public. Next for NASA, after decades of dreaming, the Dream Chaser, built by Sierra Space, is almost ready to fly. Indeed, it is being prepped for transport to a NASA facility in Ohio, where it'll undergo a series of tests to make sure the space plan can survive its heated re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. Starting these tests is crucial, demonstrating Dream Chaser's readiness for flights and potentially transforming commercial. Space Travel Sierra Space is hoping to see its space plan fly to the International Space Station or the ISS in 2024 as part of a contract with NASA. The first commercial space plane is currently at the company's facility in Louisville, Colorado, and will soon make the roughly 96-kilometer journey to the Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, Ohio. The Colorado-based company was awarded a NASA Commercial Resupply Services II contract back in 2016 under which it will provide at least seven uncrewed missions to deliver cargo to and from the ISS and Sierra Space is targeting 2024 for the inaugural flight of the first model of the Dream Chaser Fleet spacecraft, named Tenacity from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. At the company's facility, the space plan is finally coming together. We're almost done with everything, and, GYs, Sierra Space's chief safety officer shared on Monday. We're finishing all the closeout panels, we're essentially getting it ready for shipping. We've checked out the landing gear, we're going to put everything back in, stow it, and then move it onto the transport fixture and get it out of here. Tenacity will stay at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility for one to three months, during which engineers will test the space plane's acoustics of a rocket launch. Okay, test the space plane's ability to withstand the vibrations and acoustics of a rocket launch, as well as the temperature extremes it will experience during flight. The space plane will be placed inside a giant thermal vacuum chamber. For its debut flight, Tenacity will ride atop United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. The space plan is scheduled for the rocket's second mission, although Vulcan is yet to fly for the first time due to several delays. The space plan is tentatively slated for an April launch, but that still depends on the rocket's first test flight. Well if you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up, and subscribe see in the next video, thanks for watching. By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app, Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app, here down below.